Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for May 24th. Brand new book, Nehemiah. And be sure to look at the link in the description for the overview of Ezra and Nehemiah. Verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now in the month Chislev, or Kislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Susa, the palace, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came, he and certain men out of Judah, and I asked them about the Jews who had escaped, who were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. They said to me, The remnant who are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned several days, and I fasted and prayed before the God of heaven, and I said, I beg you, Yahweh, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. Now, let me just look at this footnote real quick on these two names of God. Okay, the first one, when it says, I prayed before the God of heaven, that's Elohim, and said, I beg you, Yahweh, which again, God's proper name rendered Lord. So it says, um, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open that you may listen to the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you at this time, day and night for the children of Israel, your servants. Will I confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. This is such a powerful prayer of Nehemiah. Um, because of the way God's going to answer it. So. He's praying, he's interceding for the people. His heart is for them. He did not like that bad news that he got. So verse 7, we have dealt very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you command, commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I beg you, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you trespass, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though your outcasts were in the uttermost parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place I have chosen to cause my name to dwell there. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. Lord, let me see what that says. That's Adonai. Adonai, I beg you, let your ear be attentive now to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name. And please prosper your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was a cupbearer to the king. In the ninth, excuse me, in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Arctic Xerxes, the king, when wine was before him, I picked up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad before his presence. The king said to me, Why is your face sad, since you are not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should my face be sad when the city, my the place of my father's tombs lies waste, and its gates have been consumed with fire. Then the king said to me, What is your request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you would send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may build it. Now see, he's just going about his work. And out of the blue, God opened this door for Nehemiah. Nehemiah, I think, recognized it, and it terrified him because he thought, Oh my gosh, God just answered my prayer. Now I've got to use my courage and my faith and actually tell the king what I want, which he's probably risking his life doing that. You think about it. Kind of like Esther later on. But he knew, he knew that he knew that he knew. He had prayed and God answered. Now he better walk through that door that God opened, right? So yeah, I've been in those kind of situations, of course, not of this gravity. Um. So the king asked him, what is your request? And he said, so I, uh, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you would send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. The king said to me, the queen was also sitting by him, how long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set a time for him. Moreover, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me. No, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's force, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple, for the wall of the city and for the house that I will occupy. So he had already put all this thought into what he was going to need. 
And I think it's interesting. God gave him so much favor. The king asked him, like, how long are you going to be gone? And um, what else did he say? Um, yeah, when are you coming back? When will you return? So it says, the king granted my request because of the good hand of my God on me. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So it's better than with Ezra, right? Remember that? Um, <clears throat> when Samballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly because a man had come to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. I arose in the night and a few men with me. I didn't tell anyone what my God put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. There wasn't any animal with me except the animal that I rode on. I went out by night by the valley gate, even toward the jackal's well, then to the dung gate and inspected the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down and its gates were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the spring gate and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the animal that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook and inspected the wall and turned back and entered the valley gate and so returned. The rulers didn't know where I went or what I did. I had not as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor the nobles, nor the rulers, nor to the rest who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the bad situation we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let's build up the wall of Jerusalem that we won't be disgraced. I told them about the hand of my God, which was good on me, and also about the king's words that he had spoken to me. They said, let's rise and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. But when Samballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite servant, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they ridiculed us, despised us, and said, what is this thing that you're doing? Will you rebel against the king? See, he wasn't rebelling. The king told him to go do it, right? Then I answered them and said to them, the God of heaven will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no portion, no right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Boy, that. That battle's still being fought today in some form or other. Uh, three, one. Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brothers, the priests, and they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up its doors. They sanctified it even to the tower of Hamia, to the tower of Hananel. Next to him, the men of Jericho built. Next to them, Zachar, the son of Imri, built. The sons of Hasena built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, its bars. Next to them, Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Hakaz, made repairs. Next to them, Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezabel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Banna, made repairs. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles didn't put their necks to the Lord's work. Joida, the son of Hesia, and Meshulam, the son of Besodiah, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Next to them, Melatiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Maranathite, the men of Gibeon and of Mitzvah, repaired the residence of the governor beyond the river. Next to him, Uziel, the son of Parhiah, goldsmiths, made... Wait a minute. Next to him, Uziel, the son of Parhiah, goldsmiths, made repairs. Next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs, and they fortified Jerusalem even to the wide wall. Next to them, Raphiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of half the district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Jediah, the son of Harumaf, made repairs across from his house. Next to him, Hattush, the son of Hashabniah, made repairs. Malkajah, the son of Harim, and Hashub, the son of Pahath Moab, repaired another portion in the Tower of the Furnaces. Next to him, Shalom, the son of Halushesh, the ruler of half of the district of Jerusalem, he and his daughters made repairs. Hanan and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, set up its doors, its bolts, its bars, and 1,000 cubits of the wall of the dung gate. Malkaijah, son of Rechab, the ruler of the district of Beth Hakirim, repaired the dung gate. He built it, set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Shalom, the son of Kulhuza, the ruler of the district of Mitzvah, repaired the spring gate. He built it and covered it and set up its doors, its bolts, its bars, and the wall of the pool of Shelah by the king's garden, even to the stairs that go down from David's city. After him, Nehemiah, the son of Asbuk, the ruler of half the district of Beth Zur, made repairs to the place opposite of the tombs of David and to the pool that was made into the house of the mighty men. After him, the Levites, Rehum, the son of Bani, made repairs. 
Next to him, Hashabiah, the ruler of half the district of Kila, made repairs for his district. After him, their brothers, Bavai, the son of Hanadad, the ruler of half the district of Kila, made repairs. Next to him, Nezer, the son of Jeshua, the ruler of Mitzvah, repaired another portion across from the ascent to the armory at the turning of the wall. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabai, earnestly repaired another portion from the turning of the wall to the door of the house of Elisha, the high priest. After him, Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Hakos, repaired another portion from the door of the house of Elisha, even to the end of the house of Elisha. After him, the priests, the men of the plain, made repairs. After them, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs across from their house. See what happens when they all get together in unison? I mean, they probably could have done this a long time ago, right? Um, after them, Azariah, the son of Messiah, the son of Ananiah, made repairs beside his own house. After him, Benuai, the son of Henadad, repaired another portion from the house of Azariah to the turning of the wall and to the corner. Palal, the son of Uzai, made repairs opposite the turning of the wall and the tower that stands out from the upper house of the king, which is by the court of the guard. After him, Padiah, the son of Parash, made repairs. Now the temple servants lived in Ophel to the place opposite the water gate toward the east and, and the tower that stands out. After him, the Tekoites repaired another portion opposite the great tower that stands out into the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, this is the last little section. Above the horse gate, the priest made repairs, everyone across from his own house. After them, Zadok, the son of Immer, made repairs across from his own house. After him, Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate, made repairs. After him, Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another portion. After him, Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, made repairs across from his room. After him, Malkaijah, one of the goldsmiths to the house of the temple servants and of the merchants, made repairs opposite the gate of Hamithkad and to the gate, no, to the ascent of the corner. Beside the ascent of the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants made repairs. That's the end of today's reading. Okay, I enjoyed that. That was the first section of Nehemiah. I know sometimes with daily Bible reading, it's just a matter of getting through it. You know, don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. I notice when I'm reading that, my mind goes to some other things on my list of to-dos for today. That's all normal. Um, sometimes you'll find when that's happening, the Holy Spirit's actually showing you things. So could say he's interrupting himself, right? I mean, I'm just saying, sometimes it's just the discipline of getting in there, exposing ourselves to the word, you know, getting through it, this section one more time, and um, then taking it with us on the rest of our day and let the Lord teach us or show us from it later on. So, um, so good. You did good by being here, getting through the whole thing, putting up with me, and um, I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of me, and we hope you'll join me again tomorrow. God bless you.